I'm going to use the front view now to construct all the chains that make sense in that particular viewport. And if we look at the character, and again, try to figure out which body parts would best be represented by drawing chains in the front view, we can see that the pelvis, if I draw a 2D chain just outside of the character for now, would make sense to draw in the front view simply because when I grab the bone and rotate it on its local z-axis, that pivot corresponds to the dominant axis or the dominant movement that we would in encounter on this character, sort of the pelvis tilting, the contrapposto from side to side. The important thing with the pelvis is to make sure that the root and effector line up right along the origin, which is bisecting our character. To do that, we can take advantage of the snapping tools. By default in XSI, the grid is set up so that it's the first snapping option that you will invoke. And to use snapping, you can just press the on button, and obviously turn it on and off. But if you use control, control acts as a simple toggle for enabling and disabling snapping. So you can just hold down control while you're drawing skeleton chains um, to snap to grid or to snap to facets, curves, or points if you wanted to do that. Again, I'll start with a 2D chain. Now, the important thing here isn't where along the vertical y-axis the chain gets placed, the root and the effector. What is important is that the two clicks that you place down to represent the pelvis are on that x equals zero line. And once you release the uh, control key to stop snapping, you can simply just slide that root up along the y-axis until you find a good location uh, for it. So you can see here's the uh, the pelvic bone kind of running through here. So I'm going to pivot from just just above that, like so. And if I use the camera view, I can make sure that it's placed uh, deep enough in the body. I'll move it forward a little bit here, just to s split the difference between the front of the character and the back. As you build, you'll notice that these icons start to clutter things up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to change those in just a little bit, but I'm going to finish drawing the bones first and then clean them up. I will have to address this in the fingers, as the fingers are a fairly tight area of the body to draw bones for and are going to need smaller um, visual bone chains. So another bone type that you would draw, or body part that you would draw in the front view, would be the shoulder blades. Again, if we draw a 2D chain, You'll notice that by grabbing the bone and rotating it, it controls the shrugging motion, and that lines up with the local z-axis of the bone I've drawn in the front view, so we will do so. For the shoulders, I'm going to use a two-bone chain, and I have a nice visual of the clavicle here, and the clavicle doesn't really bend or deform too much, so I'm going to use a one long bone chain starting kind of in line with the outside of the, the neck. I find that's a fairly good uh, pivot point I can use. And I'll draw a longer chain up the shoulder to about the, uh, the muscle group here. I'll draw an extra little bone like so. So it just gives me two pivot points to uh, control the shoulder if I need to use this one. We'll make sure that it lines up in the other viewports. You can see it's sitting pretty far forward on the character, which is kind of what I want because uh, the clavicle actually pivots around this point here. So I'm actually going to move that forward a little bit more and rotate the entire chain back. Now again, I'm rotating this chain as a branch, which is just the same as grabbing the root and rotating it. There we go. So something like that should work. And I'll slide it back just a little bit more. That'll work for me. And that should uh, that should be good for the shoulder blade. Now the next part that I need to draw are the fingers. And the fingers are going to need uh, a bit more attention in the sense that they're a little trickier to place because the index finger is blocking my visual of the other digits. So I'm going to be drawing one chain now and we have three pivots on each finger to account for, and I'll simply be duplicating the index chain and re-proportioning it to fit into the other, other fingers.